let's go over creating a new prescription. First thing you want to do is look for the new refill prescription screen. If the screen is not open, you can simply open a new screen by clicking on the RX icon at the top of the screen. Keep in mind you can open multiple screens at the same time so you can work with multiple patients. We recommend this for advanced users. Now, the first thing you must do is select the patient. Now you can do this several ways. If you purchase the driver's license scanner, simply swipe the ID of the patient and the patient will appear. If the patient is on file, his profile will be shown, allowing you to select the patient and begin filling. If the patient is not on file, it will ask you to create the patient. Another way you can search for a patient is by using the drop down menu. The drop down menu again has the last 25 patients that you have been working with. So it's an easy way to select a previously used patient. You also have the search icon where you can search for a patient by different parameters. Patient name, phone number, date of birth, etc. And last but not least, you can simply begin typing the last name of the patient. Notice how by only typing the first three letters of the last name, the software will begin auto-completing what I'm typing. If I had many patients with the same last name, I can use a comma and begin typing the first name to narrow down my selection. I can use my mouse to select sample nick or I can just tab over with my keyboard and press enter on the patient that I need. Now that we have our patient selected, the next field is prescriber. Similar to the same way you selected the patient, you have different methods on selecting a prescriber. The drop down menu will show you any previously used prescribers for this patient. You also have the search icon where you can search for a prescriber by name, license, DA, MPI, or prescriber number. Or you can search by the prescriber just like you search for the patient, last name, comma, first name. The next step is the item field. The item field is essentially the item that you're dispensing to the patient. You can search for an item by typing in the name of the medication. The software will start narrowing down your selection the more you type. You can separate with a comma and type the strength and press enter and the software will just show you that item that matches that strength. So it's a good way to narrow down your selection. You can also type in the NDC number of the item or you can purchase the barcode scanner. If you purchase the barcode scanner, you can simply scan the barcode on the actual product. Simply select and your item is now in the form. The next step will be to fill the quantity written, the actual quantity the doctor wrote on the prescription. You can navigate the fields using the enter key or the tab key on your keyboard. Shift tab will return you to the previous field. Quantity written, quantity being dispensed, and refills. The next field is the SIG. SIG basically is used for determining the instructions on how the patient should consume the medication. Your software will come preloaded with a list of SIGs. You can easily add new SIGs and make modifications to the current SIGs. Notice I input one TQD and the instructions take one tablet by mouth daily appeared. I can also begin typing additional instructions if I need to add any additional information for the patient. Now the next field will be the day supply field. I can navigate to the next field using the enter key or by clicking on the next field. Now notice how the software automatically calculated 3 as my day supply. If I click over on the SIG file, I'll notice that one TQD is set for one quantity once daily. Given a quantity of 3, the software knows I have a supply of 3 days. This brings me to the next field, the payment plan field. This is where you're going to select the payment option for this prescription. 
based on the payment options that this patient has currently on file. This patient currently has cash sale and Relay Health Test. So he has two forms of payment. We're going to select Relay Health Test so you can see an example of a transmitted claim and a response from an insurance. Notice the price field. The software automatically calculated $46.70 for me. This is based on the pricing table that is set for this particular payment option. If I select cash, a different price will be calculated. Pricing tables are calculated based on payment plans and based on items. We'll cover pricing tables in another chapter. You have other fields in this form. You have origin code, which is very important. The insurance needs to see how you received this prescription, whether it was a written prescription, via telephone, electronic, fax, or a transfer from a different pharmacy. You also have the delivery type field, which allows you to select a delivery method, which will print on the label. So if you select pickup or delivery, the word delivery or pickup will be printed on the label for the technician to know. If mail or priority mail is selected, a shipping label will be printed with the patient's shipping address. Notice the written date and the dispense date. It is very important that these dates are accurate. You want to make sure you have the right written date according to the hard copy. The discard date is essentially the expiration of the actual item itself. If the drug expires within a year or sooner, depending on the lot number and the inventory you have. And the RX expiration is the actual hard copy expiration, normally a year or sooner, depending on the drug schedule of the medication. The lot number can be entered automatically while you enter inventory, or can be entered manually while you're filling a prescription. We'll cover entering lot numbers and inventory in the next chapter. Essentially, these are all the fields you need to process a prescription. At this point, if you need to fill any additional prescriptions for this patient, you can simply move down the prescription. Notice how the software has moved it to the bottom half of the screen, allowing me to now fill a second prescription. If I select a brand name item, you'll notice a substitute button will appear, allowing me to substitute to a generic at any time. The DAW field will only appear if this is a brand name drug and some insurances might want to see why you're dispensing a brand and not a generic substitute. If all my fields are correct, I can move down and continue filling a third prescription or I can just transmit all these prescriptions at the same time. At this moment in time, I'm going to press save. The software will check for allergies, interactions, duplicate therapies. It will perform this battery of checks in the background and alert me if there's any of these interactions, duplicate therapies, or allergies. If everything checks out, the software now allows me to transmit and print my label. Notice how you automatically transmit to the insurance and you receive a response within a few seconds. The software will tell you the response directly from the insurance, the copayment, authorized amount, authorization number, and your cost. You can double click on the transaction to view a detailed log. If you need to reverse a prescription, you can simply right click on the payable. This will put an X in the field and you can click on transmit and now you will transmit a reversal to the insurance. So now this claim has been automatically reversed and is no longer paid in the insurance side. If everything checks out and I wish to print my payable label, I can press exit and the software will print the necessary labels I need.